goes. All right, here we go. Well, good afternoon, dear friends. It is a beautiful wait, day that God has wait, given us. Just wait a second. Oh, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you can't say go and then wait. I know. Military has a term for that. Stand fast. Okay. I think you're good. All right. Here we go. Well, friends, here we are again today. It's another day that God has blessed us with to, to join you on this Good Friday. On this day that, that we set aside to, to think about and talk about the death, the crucifixion of Jesus. Today, I hope that, that, I've, that as you find this video, recognize and know that we're, we're coming to you from a, a little bit of a different platform, that we've got a, a Zoom meeting going on right now. You'll see some other faces in a few minutes, not just mine. You'll see Reverend Katie, and you'll see James, and you'll see Jim, and Shirley, and Mickey, and Joe, and, and we're all here. We're all here for you that we might share just a little bit of Scripture and a time with you today that, that brings you a little bit closer to God. So I, I hope and pray that, that somewhere along the line that something in this service today pricks your heart just a little bit. That it brings you a little bit closer. Maybe today you hear, hear a, a set of scripture that maybe you haven't thought about in a long time. Or maybe you see a, a church that is doing ministry in a different kind of way in a different day for today. Because even though our, our doors are closed and we're not together physically, the church is still alive. And today we recognize and we celebrate and we spend that time digging deep in who we are, looking at our hearts to recognize that, that today we put Jesus on the cross. So I, I hope today as, as we gather around just for the next little while that, that our readings and our, and our meditations, that you'll experience loss. As we read along, you'll, you'll see the, the candles being darkened. You'll feel the world as it grows dark, as Jesus was betrayed and hung for our transgressions. Today is that day that we recognize that God experienced the loss of his own son. The world experienced darkness like never before. In our time together, may, may we take the time to look deep within ourselves, feel that loss. May we recognize the sacrifice that was made for you and I. May we seek a moment today, seek a moment to give God all that we have and all that is keeping us from a deep relationship with him. May we recognize that sacrifice and hold it close to our hearts, dear friends. Join us now as, as we begin to hear the story of Christ's betrayal, trials, crucifixion, and death. Will you join us now? When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table. With the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Jesus, Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. The world grew a little darker. Now the shadow of agony. 
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me a little while. Going a little, little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he returned to the disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men just keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, then your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. And then he returned to the, to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? Look now, the hour has come. And the son of man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And when he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12 arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus replied, Do what you came here to do, friend. And then the man stopped. And they stepped forward, seizing Jesus, and they arrested him. And then the world grew a little darker. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a certain servant girl came to him and said, you too were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it uh, before them all saying, I do not know what you're talking about. And when he had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. And a little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, surely you too are one of them, for the way you talk gives you away. Then he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and wept bitterly. And the world grew a little darker. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you king of the Jews? 
you have said so, Jesus. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they bring against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered him, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they all shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. They knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. And the world grew a little darker. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. <clears throat> and at that moment, the world grew a little darker. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Labanthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, 
he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tomb broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life as they came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. And the world grew a little darker. As evening approached, there was a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus's body and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. And at that moment, the world became dark. So friends, you have heard the story and you have heard once again that reality of shadows in the life of the disciples many years ago and the shadows that we still experience today, ones of accusation and agony and humiliation and crucifixion and burial. And we have participated in it. We have played our part. And so as we close this service today, there is nothing left to do but go to God. Let us pray. Savior of the world, what have you done to deserve this? And what have we done to deserve you? Strung up between criminals you were, cursed and spat on you were, you waited for death and in those moments looked for us, for your beloved, for us whose sin has crucified you, bartered you away in an easy transaction. Today, Lord God, we see that we have lost now the one who found us. So we pray with heavy hearts this day and without any real pathway or idea of what to do next, we shrink before the mystery of undeserved suffering. And we know still, God, that you bring the deep mis mystery to us of unmerited love. And so forgive us, Lord. Forgive us for not knowing what we have done. Forgive us and open our eyes to what we are doing right now. We are desperate to be transformed by your grace as through the wood and the nails, our hopes are shrouded in linen and sealed with stone and silence. Forgive us, Lord. Be with us now as we pray the words that your son, our savior taught us. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.